Welcome back to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined by Selma Hepp. She is Senior Economist with the California Association of Realtors. And Selma, there's no doubt over the last five or six years, this state has really seen cycles go wild in terms of real estate, home prices. As we speak today, what are we seeing in terms of the residential market in Southern California and California? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, after 23 months of um, double digit increases in prices mm -hmm. uh, in uh, uh, residential real estate in California, we have finally gotten to the point where prices have actually plateaued and they stopped increasing in double digit rates. So we're at a uh, single digit, it's si still at 6.6% year over year increase, but it's certainly not at the rate that at, uh, what was going on last year. Why? What happened? Yeah. Why are we now kind of flattening out a bit? Um, so a lot actually happened. Mm -hmm. uh, for So the very fast increase we saw last year was primarily driven by, um, we had really low rates, right. we had a very uh, intense investor activity, uh, we had uh, uh, international activity, we had also traditional buyers who were still able to b buy um, at reasonable or Relatively reasonable. Relatively reasonable prices. And then uh, as of summer last year, you know, when we started talking about tapering and the rates went up a, a percentage point um, and the prices were, you know, incre increased mm. so quickly so much, uh, it scared off a lot of people. It, uh, investors left the mar their margins uh, narrowed. We still have some international activity, but the tr traditional buyers really, really got scared off. So let's talk about a few of those elements. Sure. I want to talk about the international buyer sure. or the investor. Uh, I also work in a bureau in the Inland Empire. Today we're in the San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. And I know so many folks, they had the resources to buy a home in the Inland Empire. Prices had started to rise a bit and the market wasn't in such serious shape. They were able to get a loan, but they were getting outbid by all cash buyers. Yeah, It was really unbelievable how a region that was just dead mm -hmm. two, three, four years ago was hot. Mm -hmm. So what was happening then and what's happening now? Um, so yeah, so then, you know, because the prices, you know, were still just coming off of right. the bottom, you know, relatively speaking, we were, we were looking at an affordable market. Uh, it, certainly when you looked at um, what the prices were before, so we, we went from about 595 or something like that, mm -hmm. around 600 down to almost 300. Is less this is statewide or in the Inland Empire? Oh, statewide, right. statewide. So the, that's a significant drop in prices. So when you're back at that level, things are <laughs> seemingly, you know, pretty, looking pretty good. So a lot of uh, you know institutional investors, a lot of money got pulled pulled right. together, uh, institutional investors, and, and they came in and just swooped up the market. And so a lot of the activity for a long time was distress sales, so the for foreclosure foreclosure inventory, and then uh, short sales. So th and then got, that got sort of cleared out by the middle of last year. Is that year. true? I yeah. Mean, are we yeah. basically seeing the end to the foreclosure crisis? Yeah. So let me give you a sense where where in 2009 we. Had had 60% of the market being REO. Oof. Today we're about 5%. Um, similarly for short sales. 60%? Yes, oh my amazing, God. <laughs> right? And, and so currently we are at 90% equity sales. Traditionally we call them equity sales. So that Which means is your that standard it, sale, yeah. your, the, buyer, the seller's not upside down. Exactly, exactly. So. Let's talk more about the distressed areas, mm -hmm. the Inland Empire, the Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley. How are those areas doing? Have they recovered to pre-recession levels? Or, uh, and do we even want them to recover? Because yeah, was that question. too crazy? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, you, you definitely want prices to be where people can afford them. Right. You know, and, and affordability back then at the peak of the market was, you know, it just right. wasn't, it wasn't affordable. Um, so the prices have risen across the whole state. Um, in some areas, uh, in the Bay Area in particular, where we had not only international activity, but we had such a strong job growth, right. the uh, tech companies, people, you know, wealth was getting created pretty quickly. Um, the price is actually completely recovered in completely. some areas. Like completely recovered. E even some areas you'll see prices go over the peak prices. Is the Bay Area the <laughs> only part of the state where we have seen complete recovery yeah. and or uh, growth above beyond? That is, yes, that is correct. Uh, for the state as a whole, we are about 23% below the peak. Is Now, that begs the question, is that bad? Or is that where it should be? Is the market kind of <gasps> taking a breather? And so even though 23 down sounds like a scary number, 
are yeah. we where we should be? Well, I think I think in terms of affordability, it is you know we don't want we, we don't have our traditional buyers coming back into the market. We don't have the first time buyers. The Still. share, yes, the share of the first time buyers dropped from about forty percent that's traditionally that we see traditionally to to about twenty percent. I mean, depending on what survey you're well, looking that's, that's, at, that's a drop. Yeah, that's a drop. And so first time buyers, you know, are constrained on many levels, uh, lending standards. Um, Can we talk about that? Sure. Lending standards. <laughs> I'm going to use myself as an anecdote. Maybe okay. I shouldn't, but I'm going to. So uh, my wife and I decided to buy a new home. We were moving from one home to another. We were not first-time buyers. Mm -hmm. This was at the end of 2012, uh, beginning of 2013, so last year. Okay. I have good credit. It was a monster mm -hmm. to get my credit application approved. I have great credit. Yeah. Is it still that way that the credit markets are so tight that even folks with good credit have difficulty getting approved? Well, it's it's a difficult question, honestly, to, to answer because um, some will say that the credit box is still too tight. Right. Some will say that things have loosened up. Um, I think personally that um, you know, a lot of the activity that uh, that mortgage owners were dealing with for a long time were refinance activity. Right. That was easier. You know, you just have to sort of turn right. over, and the, uh, generally there was an equity in the in the in the property, and so refinance activity dropped. I think. I mean, depending on uh, again areas, but some forty percent. Mm. So now uh, mortgage bankers are forced to s sort of look back and say, Hey, where where am I going to get my next um, loan from? So they are turning into purchase um, activity again. Uh, Unfortunately, the the application pur purchase applications are nowhere. They've been sort of flat. You know, right. they're they're not. So has credit loosened a bit? Because look, if I who has I have no credit dings on my record, it took four to five months to get approved. If yeah. I couldn't get approved, what about someone who has a couple dings? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I believe I believe the credit is easier, and and there's lender surveys out there that are suggesting that uh, that uh, credit standards have loosened. Right. It's just more so a question of demand. I think people got really scared off, to be honest. And um, another survey, there is a Fannie Mae survey that asked mm -hmm. young people uh, whether they, how, if they think they would uh, be even able to obtain a mortgage, right. and they don't think they would, even without even going trying to go through the process so the the perception is oh I won't be able to do it so I won't even bother so let's know? talk about those first-time buyers like sure. you said first-time buyers are spooked they're being scared uh, away from the market I know coming up in September the California Association of Realtors is having some home ownership fairs we're gonna put that information on the screen mm -hmm. uh, you. for you to see but talk to us about the first-time buyer the types of programs that are out there, how the association may be able to assist. Yes, yes. So, um, first-time buyers in the one, are the ones who, who suffered the most, I right. think, in, in this process, because they got out, outbid, like we talked about, and and the competition was so fierce. And they were coming in seemingly with with you know, when you think about first-time buyers, you're thinking about FHA products, right? right. Uh, low down payment products, but the FHA itself got so expensive because uh, GSEs were trying to crowd in some private capital mm -hmm. and and so the G fees and so on and so forth so right. the FHA got expensive that's a federal um, housing administration a, yes mm -hmm. exactly and so um, uh, so a lot of um, there is there is a lot of initiative out there to to stimulate the first uh, buyer uh, first-time buyer demand mm -hmm. with different products and also for mortgage lenders so we do have uh, California Association of Realtors started a website with a database uh, it's called down payment down dot sierra dot org so okay. downpayment dot sierra dot org uh -huh. um, and it's a collection of uh, of all the programs out there not only for first time buyers but for um, special professions such as uh, teachers firefighters wow. for veterans for uh, people with special needs dis disabled people um, so we have and the database is searchable on a zi at the zip code level so that's that's really good this uh, is huge news yeah. don't forget these homeownership fairs are coming up uh, in September we'll have the information on the screen some of Thank you so much for joining us. Great Thank job. You so much. My name is Brad Pomerantz. This is California Edition.